Hi friends, Mama Judy here today to talk to you a little bit about how to use some very ordinary materials to make some fabric pages. I got started with this idea because I have some wonderful old vintage fabrics, some of it family uh, fabrics, that were too thin to be used as standalone pages in my journal. And while I can attach them to a paper page, I wanted to see if there was something else that would work to make them stiffer. And as I was rummaging through my supplies, I came across some of my mother's old fusible interfacing. Now, if you've ever sewn, you know what fusible interfacing is. It is a paper, it is a little bit stiff, and the fusible kind has um, beads of like a glue, I'm not exactly sure what, that is heated by the iron and will attach to whatever fabric you're using. So I had some wonderful fabrics. This is just one example that I had rust dyed and I loved them because they have this crinkly texture. In fact, this background material is that same material before I rust dyed it. And when I tried to use it as a page, it just was way too flimsy. So what I did is I cut a piece of the fusible fabric interfacing, and you have to make sure that you iron it with a pretty hot iron and get it fused well. And now I have a fabric page that is pliable, but very easy when I cut it up to use in a journal. Here is another example. This is a, uh, the same fabric that I just showed you, but I actually just dyed it, stamped it, dyed it, and it got great pattern. Of course, if you look at my work, I love the grungy look, so that was wonderful. And again, same process. Here's the back. Here's the page of material that was given to me and it's a heavier cotton, but not heavy enough. And I did the same thing after I hand stitched on it. Just attached it using my iron. Now the, I have plenty of that one. Let me move past that. This is a page of just lightweight cotton that I jelly plated on, jelly plate printed on. And you can see the rustic three, four layers that I got off the jelly plate. And again, that's a wonderful look. And I wanted to be able to use it on a page, but the cotton, once again, was too thin. So there you have it. I have fused the interfacing to the back. Let me show you a few pages that I worked further on. Once you do this, please understand it really is unlimited once you get the stiffening for the pages. I had a photograph of my mother in her, in her high school reunion picture, her high school graduating class picture. Let me center this a little bit better. And I had the piece of that same rust dyed material. So what I did that I find so exciting and so fun to use is once I fused the interfacing to the back, I copied that photo by running this whole piece, this piece like this, just like this. It, was, it turned out to be an eight and a half by 11, so I ran it through my printer. Now, I don't have a fancy printer. I just have one I bought from Costco about five years ago. It's a HP Envy series. So you don't need anything fancy to do this. And the photograph came out beautifully. Then I decided I wanted, the page was bigger than I wanted, so I cut it down. And let me go in closer on these. What I did, this coloring around here is like an ink wash. Just spray it on, add water. Once you get your 
views to piece together, it will take quite a bit of pounding and working. And then obviously, I did this hand, or the, excuse me, the machine stitching on this, which you can do. And then on this back side, it kind of gave a pattern too. Same thing with this piece. With this piece, let's go back a bit. With this piece, what I did was I just marked the ink. I took the, it's a spray bottle of Distress ink and I simply opened it and took the little tube thing that it comes attached with and just marked this up. Then again, using my machine stitching, I got a little fancy down here. I thought that was kind of fun. And right there, that I circled is my mother. So this gives me a wonderful page that I will then add tab binding to, or I will do my strips of material and it will go into a journal. It's a wonderful way to use up family photos. This one I showed you was a piece of a jelly plate. I believe I showed it to you. It's a dyed cotton coffee, tea dyed cotton. I used the jelly print, jelly plate printing on it, but then I ran it through the printer again with some old French documents I copied right onto it. And so you might be able to see that wonderful, wonderful lettering on this. And I think it just makes a yummy, yummy background. And you know me, I like grungy and yummy. On the back, what I did, I ran it through the printer again. This is actually from an old Portuguese document that I got uh, when I bought one of Alice Vieira's kits. And I just love the document. So I printed the document on the back right onto the interfacing. So, to summarize, this has been through the printer two different times. So, it works great. The final one I did, here is the other part of that document. And anything that you can think of to copy onto this is wonderful. Now, from this point on, what you do with it is up to you. You can add color to it by putting the light watercolor wash you could splatter it with paint in fact that just gave me a great great idea i may take white paint and just splatter all over it with a paintbrush but this is the one i like on this side this is a picture of jack my significant other jill's father when he was about a year old and i wanted to add a little mystery to it so once I printed that picture onto this, I then took some French documents with just the most delicate, tiny writing, just beautiful writing, and I wound up doing it upside down, which again, all I'm looking for are layers of depth and interest. What I think I'll do with this one is perhaps do just a little hand stitching down the side for accent. And on this side, it will just be a dark black, which again will add to the texture. So friends, as you're looking around and you want to experiment, this is an easy thing to do. And I think you could have a lot of fun with it. So until next time, happy creating.